The patrons have spoken once again, and this time they've chosen Mawile. This understated doll-like gem from the days of Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald is based on a Japanese legend of a woman with a mouth on the back of her head. Now, it's never been seen too prominently in the anime and isn't the most popular among all but the most dedicated of fans, but that's of no interest to the competitive scene. So, we'll find out how well it fared there today when we ask, how good was Mawile actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. In its debut generation, Mawile is slow and weak, offensively and defensively. It does nothing of note in advanced overuse, or even underuse for that matter, and it gets destroyed by pretty much every Pokemon in those two tiers. Go ahead and look through the tier list of both and you'll see. In fact, the only place it actually found some worth was in the obscure tier of never use, where everything is far weaker. But admittingly, it is quite good there, both offensively and defensively, with substitute, focus punch, and choice band sets wreaking havoc offensively, and having Having the option of using the steel typing alongside Intimidate to ward off dangerous choice banders on a more defensively focused cert. However, Mawile does sometimes pop up in overuse, and that's because it has access to one of the most controversial moves in the game, Baton Pass. Yes, Mawile is a common member on those dreaded full Baton Pass chains that make players want to rip their head out as they flounder helplessly against them. While not at all a good Pokemon on its own, it could certainly help the pass effort. With Intimidate and steel typing, it was decent against Tyranitar, Storlax and Aerodactyl, especially because it could follow up with Iron Defense to eat Earthquake even better before passing out to its team. It also had Taunt, so it could not be phased out, but of course, it preferred to have received a Calm Mind or two, so standoffs against Zapdos and potential Fire Blast Tyranitar weren't as risky. And before you ask how this would work given Mawile's low speed, remember the success of any full Baton Pass chain is predicated on getting the speed boost first, so the rest of the team can boost and pass as necessary. Not the most glorious of niches, but certainly one worth mentioning, as Baton Pass is one of the most infamously notorious components of the metagame. But as for Mawile itself, it's, uh, yeah, it's still never used. And while technically Mawile was still a member of the full Baton Pass chain in Diamond and Pearl, those teams were a lot less mainstream and a lot more difficult to pull off this generation, thanks to everything's increased power, and thus it was only seen on the rarest of occasions. But even dignifying its existence with that sentence almost feels like overselling it, to give you an idea of how absolutely minuscule its impact was, but it did exist. Mawile and its Baton Pass antics were never actually seen and underused either, since actual good steals like Registeel, Aggron, and Steelix dominated that tier instead. Thus, Mawile ended up as a pretty okay stealth rocker and never used. Although letting Charizard come in for free as rocks went up was never a pretty prospect. However, if you could get past this, it was pretty good, as the steel typing tends to be really good in lower tiers, where a lot of Pokemon struggle to scratch it with their stabs, especially with Intimidate to help out. Baton Pass for switch advantage as a kind of a pseudo U-turn also wasn't bad, especially with Mawile's low speed allowing quote-unquote slow passes should the opposing Pokemon stay in, letting its teammate come in for free. Alright, the 5th generation. 5th generation Mawile was slow and weak and never had a shot at usefulness in any of overuse, underuse, or rarely used, despite its new ability Sheer Force. It wasn't even that good in never used, although at least it could claim to have a niche there. Life Orb, Sheer Force, Iron Heads would meddle with the opponent despite Mawile's maddeningly middling attack stat, especially backed by Swords Dance, which would also jack Sucker Punch up to doing respectable levels of damage, and Thunder Punch would destroy most teams catch all wall a Lomomola. This was its main niche, but even it was exceedingly rare thanks to its low speed even by NU standards. Plus, it couldn't even pack Intimidate to help its team defensively, and it still naturally struggled against staples such as Girder and Seismitoad, so a sweep was just about never seen. But at least this sweeping variant actually had a presence in the metagame that you could have paid lip service to it, unlike its Baton Pass and defensive Stealth Rocker variants. But this is being kind. To put it bluntly, Mawile was really bad, and only the most enterprise trainer would even bother thinking about it. And now on to Gen 6, and where most of this video actually begins. Our little friend here got a Mega Evolution, and Generation 6 Mawile and its Mega Evolution is one of the single most enormous transformations a Pokemon has ever undergone. Its new Fairy typing was a blessing defensively, which is of course a fully fledged dragging immunity, which is key to being able to strike back against Latios and Garchomp, who were throwing around Draco Meteor in Outrage, as well as providing fighting neutrality and maintaining a dark resistance after Steel Lock 
lost it. Boosted special defense was also greatly appreciated, meaning it would no longer fold to a light breeze, coming off of a decent special attack stat. And in this metagame, that usually meant Clefable's Moonblast. But the most obvious change, though, was of course the extra 20 base attack and the ability Huge Power. This gives Mawile effectively a 259 base attack, which is easily the highest in the game. It was a monstrous threat with a simple set of Source Dance, Play Rough, Sucker Punch, and the newly buffed Knockoff, the latter two preying on the aforementioned lack of steel resistance to blow through Heatran, Ferrothorn, and Aegislash. Its Sucker Punch was so strong that it one hit KO'd Garchomp after a Source Dance, and an unstabbed 80 base power attack doing that much to something as bulky as Garchomp was just absolutely ludicrous. This is stronger than a plus two stab extreme speed from Adamant, Silk Scarf, or Jolly Life Orb Arceus. We'll stop with the comparisons here, but rest assured, we could actually keep going to illustrate just how ridiculous Mawile's power was. It was adaptable in its approaches as well, as Iron Head would cleave through Mega Venusaur, Focus Punch would shatter Heatran, and in a one-on-one, -on -one, Fire Fang would incinerate Skarmory, Ferrothorn, and Mega Scizor. It could even eschew Intimidate, which was its go-to ability, so that it could switch in and Mega Evolve easier, for the ability Hyper Cutter, which made it tougher to get on the field, but also tougher to switch into, because suddenly Lander Asterion couldn't intimidate it itself as it Mega Evolved, and this one turn could be game-changing. Choice Specs Keldeo was one of the most important Pokemon in the meta, and it had to be extremely careful about letting its health run low, for fear of dropping into Mawile range. After Aegislash was banned, Mawile flourished even more. Aegislash wasn't exactly a great check, but it could annoy Mawile by virtue of being a decent play rough switch in that could play King Shield mind games that might also result in Mawile getting stung by a Shadow Ball. And as such, with Aegislash out of the way, Mawile had a lot more freedom to terrorize the metagame. Eventually, it became so overwhelming itself that Mega Mawile received the ban hammer, but not before leaving a significant mark on the metagame, leaving Metachamp to follow its massive footsteps as the huge or technically pure power mega evolution of overuse. And even though Mega Mawile is now an uber, for the time it wasn't overused, it was quite devastating to say the least. But we're not done with Gen 6, oh no. Because in VGC, Mawile also had a fantastic spot in this metagame. With the ability Intimidate always being useful, especially in a Kangaskhan's meta, Mega Mawile became one of the most dominant Pokemon in VGC 2014. It actually destroyed Mega Kangaskhan one-on-one, -on -one, and alongside partners like Gothitel with Tickle or Trick Room setters, it could potentially make Kangaskhan users deeply regret their choice. And also with the right support, it basically could run over every other Pokemon. It just does so much damage. Also, Mawile's bulk was impressive, with the natural max HP, max attack set that seemed most intuitive, but even just 36 defense EVs let it live choice ban Talonflame's Flare Blitz 100% of the time. Of course, it did at first relish its max attack, especially on Trick Room teams, as it was so often found on, to really maximize the beating it would dish out and have to rely less on Sucker Punch, with Cresselia being a prime partner for that. However, many players across the season were seen using varying amounts of special defense, ranging from 76 EVs to help with Rotom Wash to somewhere in the high 100s and even a careful nature, as used by Ray Rizzle to win the Virginia Regionals, for example, to compensate for how abysmal Mawile's often preyed upon special defense was. But as stated before, its attack was just so high with huge power that it would crush just about everything regardless. And with such solid bulk, a terrific stab combination that threatened just about everything, those stab moves of course being play rough and iron head, powerful priority, and even potentially packing fire fang for would-be checks like Ferrothorn, Mawile was a premier mega choice, right up there in usage with Charizard, Gardevoir, Lucario, and of course Big Mama Kanga, which illustrates how effective it was. In fact, the lack of fire types outside Talonflame, Rotom Heat, and Charizard meant it'd be tough to prey on Mawile's weaknesses, and the fire typing was not difficult to cover for its teammates, with Pokemon like Salamence and Garchomp being excellent meta choices. And speaking of Garchomp, the idea about fire types being scarce also applied to it, except as a ground type, with its Stab Earthquake being one of the few attacks that truly struck fear in Mawile. You could also potentially have Wide Guard on one of your teammates to help protect Mawile from the spread moves of Heat Wave and Earthquake that threatened it, as did the not as prominent but occasional Rain, to make sure fire moves were not uncontested. And as for placements in just VGC 2014 now. Throughout most of 2014, Mawile was used so much that we don't even have enough time to list everyone who got top threes in regionals, nationals, and worlds. Because, yeah, there's just that many. So as for this video, we'll list its placements for worlds only. And if you want to see the rest of the placements that we found, you can check out in the description down below our long Google Doc that contains all the placements we found for Mawile. This also applies to 2015 and 2016, but we'll get to that. Anyways, at Worlds, 8 of the top 16 used Mawile, starting with Yuichi Sasaki at 16th, 
Marcus Satter, aka 13 Yoshi 37, at 14th, Wolf Glick at 9th, Lee Provis at 7th, Miguel Marti Della Torre at 6th, Ryosuke Kosuge at 5th, Marcus Liu at 4th, and Colin Hare at 3rd. In fact, even by Worlds, which is usually the end of the meta, it was the third most common Pokemon overall, sporting a usage rate of roughly 37%. But after Worlds of 2014, the 2014 meta still applied for the first few regionals that were considered part of VGC 2015, but this was pre Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire release, of course. And Mawile continued to have success in those, used by Aaron Cybertron Zhang and Wolf Glick to reach first and second at the Philadelphia regionals, as well as Sir Chicken to reach first in the seniors division at that same regional. At Phoenix, it was used by Nathan Sangler to reach second, and at Houston, it was used by Cedric Bernier and Colin Hare to reach first and second, respectively. At Fort Wayne, it was used by David Moncuso to reach first, and finally, at San Jose, it was used by Shireyes, Radha Krishna, and Kamran Jahadi to reach first and second, respectively. But then, once Oraz was released in the real 2015 metagame, its usage, while still decently prominent, was not as chart-toppingly astronomical as before. And this is possibly due to way more threats now being legal, and other Intimidate users such as Lander's Styrian being available. It was still a pretty big Trick Room threat if you did run Trick Room, but once again, its placements compared to the previous year definitely showed a fall off. And its notable placements for 2015 were as follows. Daniel's Oz Tekken reached second at the UK Regionals. Gilberto Goracci reached second at the Italy Regionals. Paul Chua reached second at the Kansas Regionals. And Jerry Woods III reached first at the Georgia Regionals. But unfortunately, by the time Worlds 2015 came around, Mawile's usage dropped to 7%, which is honestly still decently good, but obviously a massive decrease from the previous year's dominance, and none of the teams with Mawiles even placed in the top 40. And finally, to close out Gen 6, in VGC 2016, the year that allowed two restricted Pokemon, Mawiles' usage actually increased again, abusing Xerneas' fairy aura, intimidating the big physical guns, resisting fairy and flying, and being overall difficult to counter. Now, it obviously didn't enjoy Primal Groudon, but the aforementioned traits were so useful in this meta that it did enjoy a comeback. And thus, once again, we're keeping the placements down to first placers, and especially since we've been name dropping for a while. Just take our word for it, there were a lot of top 8 placements with Mawile, even in 2016. Anyway, at the Malaysian Regionals, Arif or Zani Ramil reached first respectively. In the North America Winter Series, Aaron Zhang reached first at Anaheim. And at the Colombian Nationals, Alfredo Prada reached first. Heriberto Pacaje reached first at the Chilean Regionals. Esteban Molina reached first at the Coastal Region Regionals. And BBT Liao reached first at the second Taiwanese Regionals. But then by Worlds 2016, Ma Wild's usage actually dropped off a cliff, and it once again wasn't even seen in the top 40. But regardless, by this point, Mawa had had more than its fair share of top placements, and done more than its share of shaping the metagame, and was one of the most prominent Pokemon in Gen 6 VGC. Now finally, Sun and Moon. Despite Sucker Punch being nerfed to 70 BP, Mega Mawile remained an enormous threat in Sun and Moon overuse. Three of the four new Tapus brought terrains with them that Mawile appreciated. Grassy Terrain gave it a passive recovery and weakened Earthquakes, which was highly useful against targets such as Clefable, Tangrowth, Landorus Therian, Lyscore, and of course, Tapu Bulu. Electric Terrain let its Thunder Punch cleave through Celesteela and Toxapex, and Misty Terrain allowed it to be safe from burns from Toxapex's Scald, and Rotom Wash's will o -Wisp, as well as Clefable's occasional Thunder Wave. Now, it didn't like Psychic Terrain blocking it from bypassing its low speed with Sucker Punch, but that's one out of the four terrains that it didn't like. In fact, some players actually experimented with dropping Sucker Punch. They deal with offense in other ways, and they were able to reap the benefits of a violent all-out attacker set that enjoyed the extra coverage to absolutely feast on slower, weaker teams. This wasn't the norm, though, since the beauty of Mawile is crushing both defense and offense with one set. All-out attackers with Sucker Punch began and making appearances as a kind of best of both worlds. Mawile was especially key at helping combat just about every form of stall throughout Gen 7's overused history, with its sheer power and longevity, being resistant to Stealth Rock, immune to Toxic, and having easy entry to do whatever it wanted against Chansey. Stall was always on the more fringe side, even at its most prominent, but the metagame as a whole almost always had a tinge of bulk to it thanks to the super speedy offense killers like Ash Greninja, Tapu Koko, and Zygarde. Even Rain Team's had Ferrothorn, and once Mawile got in there, it would dish out some seriously severe damage for its teammates to capitalize on. It was even useful against hyper-offensive screen teams, thanks to Intimidate occurring before Mega Evolving, making a pretty bulky overall tandem that could starve off a wide variety of threats once, and sometimes that's all that's needed. Mawile definitely had depth to its game in Sun and Moon overuse, and was more than just a brainless heavy hitter. It had many different ways it could tweak its coverage and playstyle, so that it could A, have its opportunities for a free 
giant smack maximized and B, get around its counters. For example, Mega Scissor does pretty well until Fire Punch comes around and Ferrothorn plus Heatran looks like it's pretty easy for the latter to pivot around Mawile until the Mawile user goes for Brick Brick. Mawile is so effective that its ban has been called for by prominent players more than a few times, although overall it's handled pretty well in one way or another, usually not by one single Pokemon, but in tandem. For example, Heatran, Landorus Thyriad, and Ash Greninja is more than enough to make sure you probably will never get swept by Mawile, and you can throw in Tapu Koko or Lele if you want to be really safe. However, Mawile is still going to come in and threaten to smack that specially defensive, physically squishy Pokemon you have that checks Ash Greninja, and from there you're going to have to play really well to stop it from taking a Pokemon out, or even just doing a ton of damage. And with that, Mega Mawile remains an overuse as one of the strongest Pokemon in the tier. And for Gen 7 VGC, in VGC 2018, Mawile was actually pretty excellent once again. Although this time its standard set often ran Rock Slide over Play Rough, alongside Helping Hand Gothitelle or Cresselia, who'd help it KO Zapdos, and a smack on Incineroar was very much appreciated. Mawile also often ran significant special defense investment that survived powerful fire attacks like Modest Heat Ran's Heat Wave and Komo'o's plus one flamethrower. In fact, it was one of the more decently used Megas in VGC 2018, so once again, we'll be limiting the placements that we list here, but this time to top three. Johnny Torres reached second at the Lima Open, Open, Javier Valdez won the Buenos Aires special event, Dukabi and Jeon Kyung Min were first and second respectively in the Korean Spring lead, Young King Sun reached second at the Roanoke Regionals, and Benjamin Tan reached first at the Malaysian Regionals. But unfortunately, it did not feature at Worlds at all for the first time, so yeah, there's that. But it was still pretty good in VGC 2018. And that's it, so how good was Mawile actually? Well, for its first three generations of existence, it was seriously awful, even in the lower tiers. But then it gained the Mega Evolution and instantly became one of the biggest threats around, eventually being banned in Gen 6 singles and terrorizing teams to this day in Gen 7. In VGC, its Mega form was ridiculously prominent and effective, especially in 2014. And honestly, us having to limit its near countless placings for the sake of time is a testament enough to its power. Overall, Mawile is one of the most definitive Pokemon that was reinvented through Mega Evolution. Now leave it to Mega Evolution to take a really pathetic Pokemon to astronomical heights. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False White Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And as for the comments, what do you all think of competitive Mawile? Do you think the Mega Evolution was kind of overkill, or do you think it was deserved? Let me know in the comments down below. And as for voting for next week's episode, uh, Torterra is pretty much lined up, so we won't have a voting for this week. Shout outs to the patrons for continued support of our videos and thank you to them for voting for this Pokemon and follow my crew on these social media platforms and that's all I got. See you in the next video everyone.